I don't even have to say what's going on. I know most of us know it. But we have a privilege to walk in the house of the Lord. It's a blessing. Close in our right mind. Reading the word of God. Fellowship with our sisters and brothers. So much is going on in our minds somewhere else. But let us focus on Jesus. Don't lose the look of him. He's our hope. He's our joy. He's our peace. And he's our savior. And we know that we are covered under his blood. How many know that the blood still has its power? Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Even though I was on vacation, I was still visiting the house of God. Because it's still not a vacation unless I'm in the house of God somewhere. Amen. And we will continue to keep him in front. Amen. We do give honor to our absent bishop and first lady in their vacationing time. And to all the others that are on vacation, I think Deacon Aaron William and family that I know of, amen. And others that are not here, I don't know. But if they're on vacation, we're going to pray one for another. Because traveling time is tedious.
look what happened. It could have been one of ours. That's why I'm saying don't take it for granted when you are alive. Don't take it for granted. Thank God every day. Thank God every day. Because he's worthy and I tell everybody just like it was been told all down through the years, Jesus is on his way back. I believe it with everything within me. Because he's not going to allow Satan to take over his territory. He said the earth is the Lord's and the full is thereof. The world and all of us that dwell in their end. This is God's place. Yeah. Satan cannot have it. God made it. Yeah. He made us in his own image. And we got to tell Satan to get it deep behind. But we got to pray. We got to love one another. And we got to be able to do what God called us to do. That's what we got to do. We can't take life for granted anymore. We here today looking at one another smiling. Glad to see one another. I am. But we don't know what the next second is going to bring. We don't know whether we're going to live to see the next minute or not. We don't know who might come through the doors and open up on us. But let us have our hearts and minds fixed. That whatever it happens, I'm going home to be with the Lord. That's why I preach like it's my last time. I sing like it's my last time. I live every day like it's my last time. I don't know when it's up. But I want to hear him say, well done, my Lord. Well done. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. You must bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. He's worthy. He's worthy. He is worthy of all our praises. It don't take much to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because he's good to us. Standing all over the church, amen, with your Bibles and your hands. Amen. Turn with me to Psalms 41. Psalms 41. Amen. Amen. Psalm 41 reads thus far. Blessed is he that considered the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of language. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I say, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Hallelujah. Mm. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die? And his name perish. And if he come to see me, he speak his vanity. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease say they cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, but thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me and raise me up, that I may repent 
then. The eleventh verse. By this I know that thou favorest me because my enemy do not triumph over me. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your strength, both you, my God and my Redeemer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We know this song is written by David. Amen. And my subject is God did me a favor. Amen. Amen. Have someone ever did a favor for you? Amen. Uh, God did us a favor this morning. And he touched our bodies somewhere. My eyes opened up to a brand new day. Even with new mercies. One that we've never seen before. That's a favor of God. God did us a favor when he spoke life into us. That's a favor. Because he breathed into our nostrils and we became a living soul. That's a favor. You see, it's God's favor that changes things for us. Our favor don't change us. But it's God's favor that changes things for us. And how many glad to know that they have a favor of God? Everyone else can do what you want to do. It won't last. But the favor of God will last forever. And it will turn things around whatever was meant for the bad. God's favor will turn it around and make it for the good. That's the favor I'm talking about that God had for, for, for David. Although David was sick, but God had favor on him. Why? Because he trusted in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. And all that, and all of what? Acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. We don't have any. God was giving him a favor. You know, favor is defined as something done out of goodwill. Or a kind act, if you will. Or approval of someone. Hallelujah. God always giving us good wills, kind acts. He show us things. And he let us see things. And he let us act out things. And that's the kind of God I'm talking about. One that will show us favor when no one else will. Hallelujah. All of us receive favor from God. But we don't all recognize the additional dimensions of the favor that we receive. We don't recognize that it's God's favor. We think that it's coming through our pocketbooks, coming through our telephones. But I want you to know the favor of God comes from heaven. Hallelujah. In my text, David describes how he experienced God's deep mercy in a time of great need. David was in need. When you're sick, how many know you're in need of a favor from God? Can't nobody witness to that. I can. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I know what it is. Yeah. To ask God of a favor. Yeah. To fix it, Father Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. David also saw his great deliverance as being attentive to other needs. Yeah. See, David had a need to help somebody. Yeah. We got to stop thinking about ourselves so much. Put ourselves on the back burner sometime. Yeah. And think about somebody that really, really, really needs some help. Yeah. And I'm not talking about putting money in their pocket. Because the money won't last. Yeah. But we need to turn our plate down every now and again. Yeah. And begin to pray for somebody that we know or don't know. That need help some way. Yeah. Just a good word of encouragement. Yeah. is a favor from God. All we got to do is tell God all about it. And how many know that he will work it out? The psalmist is confident that, he, that the Lord has heard his request to be healed. He anticipated the joy that he would experience when the Lord intervened. David was 
worried about how people thought about it. We need some Davis in the world. Sometimes we get off track because how we think somebody think about us. But I want you to know one thing is this. God got us all in the palm of his hand. Word tells me that the devil can't pluck us out because we are in the hands of the almighty God. The first starts how we're blessed and it reminds us of the blessed the Beatitudes. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the ones that mistreat us. It's blessed all the way down. Blessed you to be thinking about somebody or making a careful decision of how you think about it and what you're going to do. The verse number two starts with a list of things that God did a favor for David, which is the Lord preserved him. They seem to appear to God on the basis of his own works as he was to consider the poor. The person who think about the helpless will be delivered if you just think about it. And think about it with a right mind. With a mind of hoping that everything is going to be alright. God will deliver you. The Lord will protect him and keep him alive. Because the enemy will come to steal, kill, and destroy. But you ought to be able to help somebody as we travel this way. If I'm not helping somebody as I stand here in this pulpit, I may as well close up the word now. But I can only help you if you receive the help that I'm giving you. But first I want you to know that all of my help comes from the Lord. David said, I will look to the hills. From when coming my help. Because all of my help comes from the Lord. If God don't give me the help to help somebody, then I can't help nobody. I got to get it from him. David thought about helping somebody. Helping the poor. Sometimes we walk past them. And the way the world is being corrupted, we have to do that sometimes. But if God turn you around and say, give them a bite, of, a bite of food or take them to get something to eat, then do that. That's a blessing. And that's helping them. But David was going through all of these things. Although his illness, God will abstain it and restore him back to good health. How many know that if you do what God wants you to do, and if you do what he tells you to do, he'll restore you back. No matter what has happened to you, he'll restore your strength again. He will make you stronger in the places that you are weak in. He'll make you walk when you need to walk. He'll make you talk when you didn't have a talk to speak with. Oh, heaven and holy ghost. I've been on a vacation, but I've been praying and, and, and then reading the word. David 
know yes. while he was laying there on his bed of affliction. Uh -huh. That if he didn't seek the Lord before. Yeah. See, you got to seek the Lord before. Yeah. David said, I will trust in the Lord yeah. with all my heart. Yeah. Trust in him for everything. Yeah. And not put the confidence in man. Because yeah. man will deceive you. Yeah. Yeah. David was laying there. The word didn't tell me what type of illness that he had. Uh -huh. But he had an illness. Yeah. But nowadays, we have sickness and the doctor's going to name him for us. Yeah. We don't know all of what they tell us. We can't name them all. We don't even know all of what they mean. Yeah. But the, the doctors give us a name, high blood pressure, yeah. cancer, yeah. diabetes, yeah. a lot more. But I know that God, that I know is sitting high. He's looking down on us right now. And he's protecting us even as he looked down on us. And I'm glad that he knows everything. They was laying there and I'm fasting in my mind that he was thinking about all the things that he had done for the Lord. He went here and he went there and he was ducking and dodging from his brother. But God took care of that. Somebody wondered why did you say they was a man after God's own heart? After all what he done? Well, we can ask the same question to us. How can we say that we are one of God's people? All of what we've done. We sinned against him also. But how can we say that we are after him? Because we have faith in him. We have trust in him. And we believe what God They said, my enemies are wishing the worst for me. See, that's a bad thing when you got friends that come up to you. Knowing that you're sick. And they're wishing you would die. Ask the Lord, when? When is he going to die? When is that name going to be changed? That's something to, to take home in it. Wishing the worst of him. They made bets on what day that he'll die. How do you know when I'm on that? Only God knows. And I'm glad I don't know. Yeah. Oh Lord, when they came to see me, they would have seen. They spoke evil words to me. Yeah. Here I am laying on my bed of affliction. Oh, in pain and don't know what I can do. Yeah. But my friend, the one that ate with me, and the one that uh, we went out together, we done things together. My friend, they came. Yeah. Gave me bad words. Yeah. Help me, Jesus. They spoke evil of me. Yeah. They were acting friendly when they came, yeah. even while I was sick. But all the time, all the time. God knew their heart. Yeah. They had hate in their heart against me. Yeah. Oh my God. Now, when you get sick, when you're down on your body, sick bed, ain't too much you can do. I've been there. Yeah. But look up to the hills. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk to your head.
But I read in the Bible where he said all sickness is not unto death. But that God might get the glory. That's why I'm standing right here today. All sickness is not unto death. But that God Yeah. 
Ah! Uh -huh.